Welcome back to Doc Saying Stuff by AHSM. I'm Dr. Jay Rutland and... I'm Dr. Alok Patel. We're here to review and discuss your common questions in medicine. One of the first medical topics that I was ever exposed to was blindness. My grandmother was blind for 65 years. My grandmother had retinitis pigmentosa, and to be honest with you, growing up, I had no idea what that is. But enough about what I think about blindness. Let's go to our expert, Dr. Rupa Wong. According to the CDC, about a million Americans are blind. But back up, what exactly does blind mean? And how do we assess vision? Dr. Wong, lay it out for us. Blindness is a legal definition, so it actually varies state to state. But in most states in this country, they define blindness as when your central vision when you're wearing your glasses is less than 20 over 200. There are a lot of different ways that we can test vision in the office, but the easiest is just with an eye chart. Most of the time we now have computerized eye charts. We'll get you to read those letters with the biggie at the top. What is the most common cause of blindness in the United States? And what's the most common cause worldwide? One of the most common causes of blindness in the United States is diabetic retinopathy. It affects 5 million Americans and it's when your diabetes is so uncontrolled that it causes changes in the retina. Specifically, the blood vessels start to leak, they hemorrhage, and they can cause even ultimately retinal detachment. So it's something that's very preventable if you have good control of your diabetes. But worldwide, cataracts is the number one cause of blindness. And that's because in many countries, in many particular cities, or even in the villages, cataract surgery is just not readily available as it is in the industrialized nations. Now, Dr. Wong, it seems like in many parts of the world, including the United States, diabetes is a common cause of blindness. If left untreated, it can lead to impaired vision. So what should people out there with diabetes know about maintaining their eye health? When untreated, diabetes can cause really terrible vision consequences. And the most important thing is that patients, as soon as they are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, that they see their ophthalmologist. Your doctor is going to recommend that you get a full eye exam. And that's because when we're examining the retina, when we put those eye drops in your eyes, dilate your pupils, and take a look inside your retina, we can actually visualize what's going on in the blood vessels in a way that you can't see in your brain or your kidneys. So the eyes actually really give us a wonderful look into how well controlled your diabetes is. And it's important to maintain at least minimum of annual eye exams. Now, sometimes if I see a patient with very advanced retina changes from diabetes, I'm going to require more frequent examinations every six months, sometimes even every three months. All right, Dr. Wong. Now I'm going to get a little selfish here. My grandmother had retinitis pigmentosa. Still to this day, I'm not quite sure what it is and I don't know much about it, but can you tell us what retinitis pigmentosa is and how it leads to blindness? Retinitis pigmentosa is a group of inherited disorders and it affects the photoreceptors of the retina. There's 10 different layers of the retina and it targets the photoreceptors of the retina. It causes typically eventual blindness by the time someone is about 40 to 50 years old and it runs in families. It can be autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, dominant or X-linked recessive. Dr. Wong, there's a lot of people out there who have some form of vision impairment or they have a family history or they're just worried that one day they're gonna go blind. What's your best advice to all of them? If someone is worried about going blind, the most important advice I can give is first, don't just research online. What you want to do is go in to see your ophthalmologist. They've got a myriad of tests that we can do right there in the office to be able to assess if there are any issues going on in the optic nerve, in the macula, in the peripheral of the retina, in the front sections. They'll be able to address the problems and a lot of different concerns actually can be treated. So so don't just sit on it, make an appointment to see your eye doctor. Dr. Wong, this may be a very broad and loaded question, but what do you say to someone who asks if their vision impairment or blindness is treatable or if they're just gonna be stuck with it forever? Blindness can be reversible. It just depends upon the cause of the blindness. 
something like cataracts can be removed surgically and then the reason for the loss of vision can be improved. Amblyopia, which is a decreased vision in a child's eye due to a number of different consequences, unequal glasses prescription or misalignment of the eye. If a child wears a patch and undergoes patching treatment or amblyopia therapy, then they can go from 20 over 200 to 20 over 20. I have seen it. I have patients that this has occurred. So in that case, blindness can also be reversible. Many of the diseases that cause a decrease in vision can typically be slowed or controlled, but not necessarily reversed. But there are a handful of cases and conditions which can be. Thanks a lot, Dr. Wong, for being here. I know that we have several episodes in which we're going to talk about vision and we're going to see you back and we'd love to have you back. I know the audience enjoys your commentary and enjoys your expertise. We really appreciate you being here. Thanks for joining Doc Saying Stuff. Be sure to comment and leave requests for the next medical topic. And tell us what other topics you're curious about so we can dive through them right here. We will see you next time.